from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now, here's your host, Dave Vellante. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Cube Insights, powered by ETR. In this breaking analysis, I want to do some explanation. For the past four months, I've been sharing data from a company called Enterprise Technology Research, ETR. Uh, I've worked with the SiliconANGLE team to create a pure editorial product that blends the ETR data set with insights that we've gleaned from theCUBE. We've been getting great engagement and I've been getting some questions that I wanted to address in today's episode. Let me first say that as a longtime industry analyst, I've always valued data-based opinions. So when I met the folks at ETR, I became really intrigued and I thought working with them might be a good way to share some really awesome survey data and then blend it with context from theCUBE's huge observation space where we do you know, 100 shows per year. Today I want to cover six things. The first thing I want to do is answer the question that I get most often, which is, who the heck are these guys? Um, and I think it's really important to understand how and where ETR gets its data. So I want to spend a little time on their methodology and dig into that a bit. Then next I want to talk about this thing called net score. I refer to net score all the time. It's one of my favorite metrics and I'll show some examples and explain what it means and how I use it. And I'll use real and current data on containers, uh, VMware, I got some data on Oracle, AWS, and HPE who just announced its earnings. So there's actually content in this episode. It's not just a, a tutorial, so, so stick with me here. Um, and then I want to talk about the term market share and what that means in the parlance of ETR. I'm often asked, what is the relationship between ETR and theCUBE? So I, I obviously want to address that. And, and if that doesn't answer all your questions, I can give you some ways to get more information. So first, who is ETR? The ETR is a research company. Actually, it's a platform or a product that was built by a company called Eptivity. The, the key advantage is they do primary market research, first party data, and they have a community of survey respondents that, that gives them spending intentions data, and they survey, survey this space on a, on a fairly regular basis. Currently, there are about 4,500 buyers in this survey base. And in my experience, each quarter about a thousand or so respond to their requests for spending data. This group collectively represents nearly a trillion dollars in annual IT spending on enterprise tech. And you can see here, there's a nice mix of C-level execs, VPs, IT management. You know, the respondents, they like to participate because those that do, well, they get access to the data in exchange for their information. Now, there's no incentive for them to exaggerate their spending intentions. I mean, it's not like, remember the old days of computer pubs, where if, if, if you spend over a threshold, you get a free magazine? This, so this is legit spending data, spending patterns that ETR vets with uh, historical data. They also pay real close attention to the income statements of public companies and tune their data and forecasts in a way that I'll address later. And you can also see here that the, the data is global and it comprises a very strong mix of large organizations across virtually all industries and geographies. I mean, it's North America heavy, but they've got representation all over the world. And these guys have been at it for 10 years and they're serious data geeks. They have a team of stats folks, AKA data scientists in today's terms, who do some really cool things with the data, like using regression analysis to compare their spending data with Wall Street consensus. Um, now they primarily, ETR serves Wall Street customers who are trying to gain an advantage, you know, ahead of earnings news coming out, and they, they want to squint through the noise, which is kind of what I'm trying to do here. ETR's founder, his name is Thomas Del Vecchio, and he's essentially created a survey panel on steroids. You know, when I worked at IDC, our holy grail was to create a panel and use it to track spending data. We never got there, it was too hard. So what we did was we did spot surveys on hot topics like you know, data deduplication last, last decade to see where all the action was. And then periodically we do broader spending intention surveys, you know, but they weren't conducted on a, on a formal quarterly cadence. And what Del Vecchio did is he flipped this model on its head what I mean by that is, 
ETR does regular quarterly broad-based spending surveys, and then periodically they drill down into the hot areas. The great thing about this model, from my perspective, is that you can run the analytics and do time series across the data. So way, way more powerful approach. Now there are other panels out there that you can tap into, but ETR has built a platform on top of what, in my opinion, is the best spending intentions data that I've ever seen. And they got a really nice SaaS product that allows me to cut the data by size of company, geography, market segment, and I can answer questions like, are containers killing VMware? And I can answer that question by slicing and dicing the data rather than having to field a completely separate survey. So what I want to do here is I want to take that example and drill into a key, TR, a key ETR metric that I use a lot, which is called net score. Now net score represents the intensity of spend for a company. Higher net scores indicate a positive spend trajectory and the lower net score indicates a flat or negative spend trajectory. So what I'm showing here is a cut uh, from the ETR data set and what I'm actually doing to answer that question that I just proposed, look at, so you see number one in the red, I'm filtering the ETR data by container platforms. <clears throat> so this is organizations that are spending on containers. And you can see number two there, the N is 541 organizations spending on containers. And then number three, I cut the sample by VMware mentions. So out of the folks answering the survey for a given period, I want to isolate on those doing business with VMware and evaluate their spending. Notice number four, which is the net score. That's what I want you to focus on. Net score is a measure of spending momentum, as I said. So specifically for each ETR survey, ETR asks about spending. Are you adopting the platform as new? Are you spending more, spending the same, or spending less, or are you leaving the platform? And they essentially subtract the the spending less from the spending more and calculate a net score. And you can see in number five, the net scores over time. And I've superimposed these, these numbers with shared accounts that are mentioning VMware. Now remember, ETR allows for multiple responses of, of various VMware solutions. So there are, again are multiple responses in that shared end. But you can see that VMware's net score has held up around 33 to 34% over you know, two year period. So there's zero evidence that containers are hurting VMware today in this data. Now prior to 2018, by the way, I kind of ignore those spikes because the shared end is, is too low. It's like 12 mentions. But the rising number of shared accounts over time is yet another clear indicator of, of adoption between those container customers and VMware spend. Now I can cut this by size of company, industry, zillion different ways, but, but this is everyone in the data set for the October survey. What I want to do now is take a look at what ETR calls market share. Market share in ETR language is a measure of pervasiveness. So they calculate this by taking the number of mentions of a vendor within a sector, they exclude replacements, and they divide by the number of respondents within that sector. So what I'm showing here is an example using market share data for analytic databases. So focus on number one, which takes the entire sample from the October survey, and then number two, an and N of 1,336 respondents. So we choose in number three, the data warehousing software segment, and then select from the pull down AWS Redshift and compare that with Oracle within that sector. So you can see in the last two years that AWS has rapidly gained share. You can see in number four that the net scores where AWS has a way stronger spending momentum with 62% and negative 3% for Oracle. What I love about this data set is the ease with which I can either call BS or validate a vendor's claim and get ahead of the market by combining the data that we collect on the cube and that we hear all the time with the ETR survey data. And remember last week's breaking analysis I put up a view showing Snowflake, which claims it continues to do well despite its apparent overlap with AWS Redshift. And as you might recall, the ETR data clearly confirmed that Snowflake was thriving along with Redshift and eating away at Teradata's business. So it confirms their narrative. Let me share another example of how I use ETR market share. HPE just reported earnings yesterday and it missed its revenue targets. 
And here's a chart that HPE presented as part of its earning package. Now, at the highest level, HPE reports revenue across three major lines, intelligent edge, hybrid IT, and financial services. Now, picking on HPE, but you know, I could make this argument with pretty much any legacy computer company or any hardware company. And now the narrative from these companies is we're investing in the new hot areas like edge and the world is hybrid and hybrid and that's our opportunity. And we are uniquely positioned and we see lots of repatriation from the cloud where people have moved to the cloud but have sort of cloud regrets and now are moving back to us. You hear this all the time from execs at these companies but you sure don't see it in the numbers. Look at the growth rate year over year in HPE's business. Edge and hybrid IT are both shrinking in this example. Even when you adjust for currency and take out what HPE refers to as tier one sales to the big hyperscalers, which is a business that HPE exited last year. Meanwhile, when you watch, when you look at AWS and Azure numbers, they're growing at 35% for AWS, 59% year over year for Azure last quarter. Now the HP narrative is we're, we're focusing on margins and exiting low value businesses. And to be fair, that's true. And it shows up in HP's gross margins and operating profit and free cash flow. But I have an addition to the narrative, which is the cloud is eating away at their business. And while repatriation most certainly happens, it's a figure that's not showing up on the income statement. So I'll look at the ETR data to answer the question, how is the cloud impacting HPE's market share? So here's what I do. To answer that question, I filter the data that I'm showing on, on this chart, and I select the cloud computing filter in the upper left from the pull down. I do a second filter right below, pulling down and selecting AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud Platform. So there's 818 respondents in the ETR's October survey that fit that criteria, cloud spenders. And then I click on the market share radio button and pull data in from the January 2010 to the October 19 survey. In the October 2019 survey, you can see that the shared end shows 495 respondents that are also spending on HPE. So nearly 500 HPE responses within 800 cloud accounts. And look at the story. Like many, HPE came out of the downturn with a pent up demand. It announced a public cloud in 2011, which froze the market a little bit. And by late 2014, the market clearly understood that that offering was a fail. And HP exited the business in 2015. And you can see how the cloud is eating away at spending on HPE's products. And you can see the net score of 10.9% in the red, underscoring the headwinds that HPE is facing. Now, of course, Antonio Neri, who's HP CEO, is doing what he has to do, cutting costs, focusing on higher margin opportunities, adopting an Azure service model, doing stock buybacks. But as I like to say, the data does not lie. Now where it really gets mind blowing is when ETR runs regression models using Wall Street estimates for a public company as an outcome variable and tests that against the covariates and independent variables in its data set. Now these act as predictors, so not only using the data to tell the story of what happened in the past, but using it as a forecasting tool. Okay, so that's most of what I wanted to share with you today. There's a lot more, but let's, let's leave it there for now. I want to address our relationship uh, between the Cube and ETR. We're essentially just friendlies. We currently have no commercial relationship. There's no money exchanging hands, there's no other incentives other than we're birds of a feather, so to speak. They give me access to their data and I use it weekly in these breaking analysis segments. And we co-brand the content, the Cube Insights, powered by ETR. So it's a beautiful fit between what we learn on the Cube and this awesome data set. So if you find this stuff useful, I encourage you to reach out to ETR. Their website is etr.plus or just Google Enterprise Technology Research or you can hit me up on, on LinkedIn or Twitter. At, I'm at dvellante and I'd be happy to put you in touch. This is Dave Vellante signing out from this episode of Cube Insights, powered by ETR. Thanks for watching everybody and we'll see you next time.